Hey folks, welcome to Dad Describes, where one episode at a time, we take on the decline of society by discussing values, family, and faith with a relentless passion for truth. If you'd like to take that journey with me, feel free to hit the subscribe button and come along for the ride. I do put out regular content. So I'm a dad, I love my kids, and if I want them to consider Christianity, here are the five books that I want them to come to terms with. Let's get into the meat of this and get it going from least to greatest recommendation. Number five, as you can see on your screen, The Death of Ivan Ilyich by Leo Tolstoy. It's a short read. It's not even considered a novel. It's only 60 pages long, which is ironic because Tolstoy also wrote War and Peace, one of the longest books that you can find anywhere. The death of Ivan Ilyich tells the story of a man dying and the reaction of those around him, his family, his would-be friends. This book is a wake-up call for life and many of the meaningless things that we do while we inch ever closer to our own mortality. Most of us do everything possible to avoid death, the conversations about it, ignore it, sweep it under the rug. This story rips us out of our own personal narrative and shakes the reader awake to your fate, our fate, my fate, that we ultimately have to face. Number four, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist by Norman Geisler, Geisler and Frank Turek. This book is Good for both non-believers searching for truth and Christians that have never been given a proper education and understanding the philosophical, scientific, and moral reasoning for the existence of a creator. You know, a lot of our children, we raise up in the church and we send them off to college and they run into that professor that just happens to be good at deconstructing students faith and you send your kid in and they don't they don't have the proper foundations built they're they're dead ducks this book will help give them a solid foundation help get them ready for dealing with that number three cold case christianity by j warner wallace this book was written by an atheist cold case detective that decided to use his skills that he learned in law enforcement as a detective to test the claims of the story of Jesus. He wanted to disprove it. He wasn't really a big fan of Christians. Detective Wallace examines the evidence for who wrote the Gospels, what do they claim, and are they reliable? And he presents the evidence like he would be taking it before a judge to have a jury rule on it. So the book is written in a way of would the story of Jesus hold up in a court before a jury. So, so far I've given you three books that cover that life is going to be hard and that you're going to die. But wait, consider that God exists and that he loves you. Yes, I do think it's important for Christians to come to terms with these subjects. If you grew up in the church, as I was talking about earlier, you have adopted a faith by birth. This is a great foundation, but the house above that foundation needs its own pinning or anchoring. For my kids, I can't be that. I don't want to be the reason that they believe in God. I want God to be the reason they believe. I want them to have their own personal relationship with Christ that is their own thing in coming to grips with what is the truth. You know, furthermore, I don't want my kids to be religious. I want them to have a fruitful faith that lets them stand apart from the world around us. So book number two is The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. We all give and receive love in different ways. We learn as kids these patterns and they end up being in our marriages and our friendships and we can easily make a mess of things. I've talked about it before. Marriage is the bedrock of society. It's important. Our commitment is important, and that 
Commitment impacts our families over generations. The Bible relates the relationship between Christ and the church as a marital relationship by comparison. That may seem odd, but we consider that marriage is a lifelong covenant and I think is a little bit more relatable to our human understanding. So it's important to get our marriage right. So this book is going to help you zero in on your spouse's needs and help them understand yours and maybe even let you know what your own needs really are. Many marriages are time bombs. Diffuse the darn bombs before you're emotionally, spiritually wounded and broken from just dealing with life. I mean, life's rough enough. And, of course, the number one book that Christians should read is also the most important. Sadly, it's probably the least read, and I'm guilty. I sat the better part of 40 years in church pews and never completely read the Bible. Do you need to read the Bible to be saved? No, of, of course not. But I will say it's important to have the foundational principles of the Bible being added to your life. Many people claim to be Christians in this world, and probably most of them have a bad theological view of what that actually means. And even for those of us who read all of these things and look at faith and theology and doctrine, you know, we, we try to incorporate that, integrate it into ourselves, because it's a difference between belief and integration. And it's so easy to fall short and fail. You know, when you have an opportunity to tell the truth, which could have consequences, or easily lie and avoid that, you know, what, what do we do? It's so easy to fail at that. It's so easy for me to fail at that. So as Christians, it's important to constantly be pushing our faith, perfecting our faith, but still relying on grace and mercy from Jesus because, man, I, I can hardly wake up and not screw something up before I get out of bed. So as I said, there are plenty of other Christian books that I would probably have my children read. These I would put as the most five important. Maybe I'll do a next five list. If you would like to see something like that, let me know down in the comments. Let me know what books you think should be on this list. You might have a different list that you would present to your kids. If you like this content, feel free to hit the like button below and subscribe. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll hang out with you next time.